Hey class, we're back with Harriet Jacobs. And the piece of hers that we read for class is uh, chapter five, The Trials of Girlhood from her autobiographical book, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. Um, a lot of Harriets, right, during this time period. Um, as I mentioned, there's Harriet Tubman, who's that famous former enslaved person. She escaped to freedom and, and then became you know, helped form the uh, Underground Railroad and became a conductor on it. There's Harriet Beecher Stowe, uh, our author who wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. And now we have Harriet Jacobs. Uh, Harriet Jacobs is also an escaped enslaved person um, who was formerly enslaved, but escaped freedom. Um, her, she used a pseudonym to protect herself. And interestingly, like Fanny Fern, she used a decidedly female name, Linda Brent kind of can't get around that when you're when the novel that you're writing and using that for is called incidents in the life of a slave girl so that would make much sense to conceal her identity as a woman right um needless to say she she used a, a pseudonym linda brent um uh, to protect her identity uh probably because you know what during this time period writing about things like that pretty scandalous especially given some of the details that she included about uh, you know how she was sexually harassed by the slave owner um, and and abused. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty eye opening this account that that we got from an actual and ins formerly enslaved person who had escaped freedom. Yeah, squarely in the 1800s, 19th century. Um, so pretty neat that she's educated enough and um, is free and 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 can find an audience for this material. All right, well, Harriet Jacobs, here we go. We have a photo of her. Isn't that exciting? If you look at the written out lecture, there's an actual photo of Harriet Jacobs. I just love to see what these women look like. Uh, and the chair she's sit, sitting in is very ornate. Um, and you can see what she wore, how she did her hair, it's all, and, and what she looked like. I love these windows into another time period. Um, so take, definitely check that out. We also have some interesting web links if you'd like to know more about her life story and uh, her work that she wrote. There's a website um, that talks about her, the Literary Ladies Guide, which gives her biography. And um, there is material on her biographical or biographical information and literary information about Harriet J Jacobs um, on pbs.org, you know, the public broadcasting system. Uh, and then there are some YouTube clips. Uh, one YouTube clip interviews cast and crew from a rehearsal for a production dramatizing Harriet Jacobs' life. Uh, and that cast is from the Steppenwolf Theater. Uh, and then there is a YouTube link that sets to a stirring musical background, pictures and quotes from Harriet Jacobs' um, incidents in the life of a slave girl. Then there's another link of the chilling text of the actual fugitive slave notice and reward published in the paper for the capture and return of Harriet Jacobs when she escaped to freedom. I told you, remember, she, is, she did escape. Um, she fled her, her slave owner's house and he actually published a notice announcing that he was looking for her, that she had escaped, and he was promising a reward for her return. All right, so Harriet Jacobs, pseudonym Linda Brent, um, lived from about 1813 till 1897, so very long life. She lived to about 84 years old. Harriet was born into slavery in North Carolina. That's where I live now. Yeah, North Carolina. Um, after her mother... Um, and her owner slash mistress both died, Harriet was willed to a juvenile niece whose father became her despotic slave owner, James Norcombe. His sexual harassment of her started when Harriet was only 15 years old. Norcombe constantly reminded Harriet that she and every part of her body was his possession. And as such, he could use it however he pleased. This harassment was so pronounced 
that Norcombe's own wife was even jealous of Harriet and very suspicious of James and his activity with Harriet. Seeking compassion and understanding, Harriet turned to a free-thinking and educated white bachelor lawyer named Samuel Sawyer, who later actually became a state senator in North Carolina. Harriet had two children with Samuel Sawyer. On her relationship with Samuel, she said, it seems less degrading to give oneself than submit to compulsion. So obviously submitting to compulsion, that's the relationship that she had with Samuel, or not Samuel, but with, with James Norcombe, who, who was constantly sexually harassing her. And she said it seemed des less degrading for her to give herself to Samuel Sawyer, a white man, than to submit to uh, James Norcombe, who compelled her uh, through what he said, uh, you know, was his ownership of her body and herself. Anyway, these pregnancies enraged Mr. Norcombe uh, because she was getting pregnant with another man and he was a white man. Although I don't know if he knew that the man was a white man, but he threatened to sell away her children from her because he was so enraged that another man had gotten her pregnant. Um, how he knew it was another man that got her pregnant, I don't know. Um, but when he later threatened to make her children field hands, Harriet could no longer bear the torment anymore. So she escaped to her grandmother's house. Her grandmother was a freed slave, a freed former enslaved person, I should say, um, who lived in the same town as the Norcombs. So kind of neat that her you know, for that time period, for her grandmother to be a formerly enslaved person who was freed. Um, she was not willed away the way Harriet was um, when her owner died. Um, so Harriet lived in a crawl space in her grandmother's attic for seven years. A crawl space is not big. You cannot stand up in a crawl space. She lived there for seven years because she no longer wanted to be James Norcombe's slave or enslaved person. Um, so James Norcombe, he couldn't find her and he couldn't force her back into slavery. Harriet could not stand up in that crawl space and stayed up there all day and most of the night, except for a brief period at night when she could come down to exercise her muscles. Harriet drilled a hole in her crawl space so that she could see her two, two children play outside. Their father, Samuel Sawyer, had purchased the children from James Norcombe, and he lived nearby. So that's how her, her children actually got away from James Norcombe. Harriet herself escaped. She fled to her grandmother's home and hid out there. Meanwhile, Samuel Sawyer bought the two children that he had fathered with Harriet and kept them at the grandmother's house. So I guess James Norcombe never figured this out. Uh, after seven years, Harriet escaped to Philadelphia and then up to New York, where she worked as a nursemaid and was later employed by notable literary man Nathaniel Parker Will Willis, who was Danny Fern's brother. Yeah, interesting. Harriet Jacob worked for Nathaniel Parker Willis. There, Harriet started writing down her life story, which was published in serial format in the New York Tribune, the same newspaper for which Fanny Fern herself wrote. Yeah, so that was Horace Greeley's newspaper. But Harriet's story was not fully published because her frank accounts of Norcombe's sexual harassment and her interracial relations with Samuel Sawyer were deemed inappropriate for modern readers. So most of her life story was published, but, but not those parts. They kept those out because they didn't think um, people would read it. They were too scandalous to talk about um, sexual harassment and sexual relations um, with uh, Samuel Sawyer. Harriet remarked on the candor of her autobiographical incidents, quote, this is, this is Harriet's own quote, 
this peculiar phase of slavery has generally been kept veiled but the public ought to be made acquainted with its monstrous features and i willingly take the responsibility of presenting them with the veil withdrawn i do this for the sake of my sisters in bondage who are suffering wrong so foul that our ears are too delicate to listen to them Unquote. so our ears are too difficult to hear them and yet, real human beings are undergoing them. Something that we, human beings, deem so inappropriate that we can't even listen to it. In fact, so scandalous were the accounts of her own enslaved person's life, as well as her discussion of how the church in the South enabled, actually enabled slavery, that she had difficulty finding someone who would publish her book. Which was later called, of course, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. And it was published in 1861. She found a publisher. Uh, for which, from which we read Chapter 5, Trials of Girlhood. So she's writing about her own life and the trials that she endured as a girl. Remember, it was that sexual harassment that James Norcom submitted her to. Harriet changed the names of the people involved to prevent persecution, but she wrote the details. She even wrote the book under, as I mentioned earlier, the pseudonym Linda Brent, so she wouldn't be persecuted for the forthrightness and the atrocities that she wrote about. All right, well, I hope you enjoy reading about Harriet Jacobs' life, although it's, a lot of it is not enjoyable. But I hope you appreciate it, that we get this window in time into another life removed from our own and, and in the life of an enslaved person at that, which is something that none of us has experienced. It's quite eye-opening and incredibly disturbing. I hope you appreciate being able to have that account so that these things could be stopped by getting that out in the open. It brought awareness to what people were, were having to undergo and what their lives were like. And I think when the Northerners were able to see these atrocities and maybe even some Southerners, that it impelled them to fight freedom and protection of these people and, and it was published 1861 that was the start of this war all right i leave you to these readings and writings